Hi there, and welcome to Wade's Workshop. And this is going to be Shed Talk number five, I believe. As you can see, the green jumper with the holes in has come back out of retirement. It's, uh, well, out of the wash anyway, so I've got the green jumper back. Few things been going on. I've been very busy the last week or two with work commitments and bits and pieces that I've got to get on with. So I've my sort of posts have slowed down a little bit. But, yeah, I've been busy. You know, you've, you've got to win a living, so to speak. Anyway... In this episode, I've got uh, a little milling job on the lathe, uh, a different setup again to one you've seen me do before, not using the milling slide, so there's that to show you. Uh, what else have I got? I've received a viewer gift. I'll go into that in a little bit of detail. Um, Eric and Ernie, my spiders in the corner, have decided to disappear, so I'll show you a bit of footage of that. And the great big beast that was up here, I haven't seen him in a few days either, so I think... With the weather warming up, I think they've probably gone off outside where there's more likelihood of food for them, I suppose. But, uh, you know, let nature be, you know, if they want to come in here out of the weather in the winter or, you know, until the weather gets nice, that's absolutely fine. As long as they're not hanging around above my head, I'm not I'm quite happy for them to be in the corners. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I do have a cunning plan for my ER32 collet holders. As you probably saw in a previous video, they were running out just a little. Um quite badly with the MT3 one and only very slightly with the uh, one that I'm actually going to use the one that's mounted on a faceplate so I've bought a few little bits and bobs with an idea for an experiment to make my own tool post die grinder so to speak or tool post grinder and I'll show you the bits and pieces I've got and that quite possibly once I've had a play with it the die grinder will be used um, to true up just those last sort of thou on each of the two ER32 collet holders just so that peace of mind I know they're right. I'm still toying with the idea that it might be the collet nuts that are out um, which is not helping with the lower quality collets that I've got so I may buy a higher quality nut or ER32 collet nut and try it on each of the holders with my existing collets after grinding and we'll see where we are but you know that's that's just surmising at the moment. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the content of this little video. And I hopefully I'll be able to get a few more out with some more interesting stuff as we go forward. So I have this component here. It's got a series of holes. It basically starts off as a circular component with the bore and the OD turned. And then I have to drill these three specific holes. I think they're 10 mil holes here and a 5 mil hole there. They have to be in the correct orientation. Then I have to mill two flats. Now... The flats have to be, as you can see, from centre line in this offset orientation, and one's larger than the other. So I made a little jig, first of all, that drops over the top with the three holes in the correct place, because I have to repeat this. Um, with a register that drops in there, I'll show you the little jig. Basically, I've machined two flats on the jig in the correct place, and I use the jig for setting out not only the holes, but the two flats as well. So as you can see, I've got rudimentary fly cutter set up it's basically an old center drill or a milling cutter something like that in a little stub arbor drilled at 45 degrees grub screw in the end and i've set this component which basically is going to look like this on here with its little jig on top squared up the face of the jig onto the chuck with a square and i'm taking a series of cuts across the face my finish size isn't critical but as you can see, I can just whiz across the face very quickly. Rudimentary milling set up in the lathe. And I'm taking probably, you know, something like half mil cuts at a time. And it's very quick, straight across the face. And when I get to within sort of tenth hour of that face, I know I'm pretty much there. And I'll bring you back when I'm somewhere near and say half to three quarter mil at a time just locking the carriage off advancing the uh, carriage on half mil to 0.7 something like that at a time running at about 680 rpm and as you can see just tearing off that base so just taking the final cut across here leaves about half a mil up off the base of my jig which is the part on the top just run that finishing cut across right on the end of the travel of my compound here just makes it just run that cutter back across 
clean it up with a reasonable finish. It's not important, it's clearance on its final position. So let's move on, strip it down, turn it round. So I'll just strip this down so you can see what I've done. Loosen off the clamp, I've got a, a clamp on here and it's nice and tight obviously because uh, the intermittent cut will be knocking it all over the place. So there's my component. With its first flat, I'll just file the burrs off here now on the top and bottom from fly cutting. I've got a quite a big one on the bottom but nothing on the top to speak of. And my jig, again started off as a circular ring with a boss that fits in the bore. This is a 5mm hole here and a 5mm hole here and I can line up the holes between the jig and the holes were drilled using this jig. I will actually need to put some hardened bushes in here because I'm using it more and more often and that's my first flat. So basically I can turn it round now 180 degrees, put it back on and line this up square with a jaw. So I just pop the pin down a little bit, just tighten up the handle loosely, get my square against the face of the chuck loosen it off a little just winding a bit further so that I'm on the face again okay. just hold that firmly there so that I know that that front face of my jig is square to the chuck <coughs> tighten up the handle nice and firmly and I now know that the face of the jig and its orientation is all correct and I need to machine this bit off square to the chuck so back in with the fly cutter bring it over to touch get myself a starting point let me just wind back my carriage and my compound a little bit so that I've got the travel I'm going to need just lock my carriage off there Okay, check for fouling, nothing's fouling, start her up, bring her away, put a cut on, and we'll do that other face. I'm just using my compound to put this on, half a turn at a time. Back and forth probably. Eight to nine passes, maybe. Well, I've just found it, it's the quickest, simplest way to do this job without setting up the milling slide and all the rest of it. I mean, I could do it with the milling slide. There's several ways I could do it, but that would mean stripping down all the compound, putting the milling slide on, setting it up, squaring it up. For this little job, it fits straight on with a tool post fix. I've got it on a couple of parallels, I'm using the jig to square up the, uh, the component from where I want the flat. I'm using the flat on my jig, which was all measured out at an earlier date. But for a repetitive job like this, it's just quick, simple and effective. And as far as time is concerned, it's just an efficient way of doing it. Obviously if I had a milling machine, different story altogether. So just back and forth, a few passes. As you can see, I've nearly done that flat already. One, one two more cuts. I'll just see this through to the end. There's probably a mill left on there. That probably leaves half a mill, which is about where I want to be. The dimension for this isn't critical. And I have machined the jig half a mill smaller than the finished size. So I know if I leave that just half a mill proud. I'm going to be within about 10 hour where it should be. There you are. Quick, simple way of milling on the lathe. I'll give you a close-up of my little fly cutter. Let's bring you in there. Let's have a look. You can see the little tip 
on my fly cutter let me get you in focus so yeah the fly cutter little back angle here little back angle there so it presents like a 120 degree face as long as I don't go deeper than that there which is about a mil and a half it'll machine it straight off and I could actually take like a mil and a half I just have to go a bit slower but because this handle isn't that tight, the way I'm clamping it down, I don't want to take heavy cuts. Series of light ones, straight across the top, and as you can see, that's the two flats done. So yeah, it's just a quick and simple way of doing it. Two down, three to go, and there's my little jig. Turned down with a register that fits in the centre. My tool post bolt fits through the middle of this for clamping it down, and it sits on a pair of parallels once it's all assembled. So yeah, that's pretty much the jig. Jig fits on there. Drop the little pin down through the 5mm hole, line it up, he says, line it up, <laughs> ah, there it is, and then I just mill off both sides and end up with the finished result. There is a little bit more work to do, there's a tap hole in the side going through, and it eventually becomes a manifold for a conversion of a petrol engine into LPG. A few weeks ago, some of you may have seen my couple of episodes on making a tailstock die holder. And having finished it, the conclusion was that I was going to need a winding handle for the headstock. And then I did a little feature on making this knocked up quick little winding handle. If I had a job where it was one-offs, where I could just pop it in, tighten up on the nut there, and wind the chuck just to put a thread down a piece of bar, and then pull it out, this would have been the ideal thing. Um, which was the little winding handle carrier so basically what I would do is put a spanner on. One of my viewers subsequent to that asked me for a video explaining how to sort out the gear train and I'm sure many of you will have seen that video as well. Well a particular viewer was a sort of friend of a viewer who had asked a viewer on YouTube that uh, is on my channel to for me to do this job. So anyway, I did the job, and as it turned out, the viewer, I think it was Zookeeper, who asked me to do the video on setting up the gear train for various threading, well, his friend wasn't actually on YouTube, didn't have a YouTube account, and he actually formed it after seeing the video and how much it helped him, set up his own YouTube ch uh, you know, channel so that he could thank me personally. Anyway, he did more than thank me personally. He actually made me this winding handle. Now, if I were doing multiple threads and what have you, I'm you know, really pleased with this, and I mean, it is absolutely ideal. Drops into the headstock. Again, 17mm spanner. And as long as I got my cutter out of the way, which is my fault. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the design of this. And I will move my di digital back out of the way. There we are. And I now have a bespoke winding handle. It's very comfortable in the hand. The handle stays still while you're rotating it. And again, fits perfectly in the headstock. You loosen the nut off. Give it a little tap on the end. And you can withdraw it. So yeah, pleased to bits. Absolutely thrilled to get my first viewer gift. So thank you so much. So to cut a long story short, to Harry B from Northern Ireland, thank you so much for the winding handle. I'm absolutely stoked and it's my first viewer gift. Thank you very much and I've tried it out. It works wonderfully. Great job and I'm sure I'll find lots of use for it in the future. So thanks from me. So moving on, uh, I've had this little draper little multi-tool die grinder, a bit like a Dremel, that sort of thing, with various bits and pieces and what have you, that I've used oh, lots and lots over the years. Um, you know, it, it's had a fair bit of use, and the spindle in it does actually vibrate quite badly. And I'm still looking into grinding my ER32 collet chuck, the uh, MT3 type, and the uh, one that I've made to go on the headstock. So I have bought a few new goodies, just for an experiment. So I'll show you those. So I picked up this little cheap die grinder, 20 quid, something like that. Silverline DIY series. I have actually had it out of the box, tried it out, and there's no vibration in the spindle. So it's probably a better starting point for my die grinder. 
So secondary to that, I've also bought this flexi drive shaft, which goes in the end of the die grinder. And I, my plan being to hook up into the die grinder and use the spindle end mounted in the tool post in some way with some grindstones again something like this I mean you're talking sort of uh, not even a tenner for that and probably about four quid for the little stones and I've also picked up let me bring it into shot again little telescopic stand clamp on the end of the bench which will hold the grinder itself so yeah, that's something going forward. I'm going to experiment with that and I will probably produce a video showing me grinding my ER32 collar chucks just to get them running absolutely true to the spindle. So my uh, little insect friends have left the building. The little shell of a spider is all that's left there, but Eric and Ernie have actually left me. So, oh well. I suppose because the weather's got a bit warmer and they've gone on to uh, areas with probably with more food about. But anyway, I dare say they'll be back. This is the top shelf opposite my lathe. And as you can see, it's getting a little bit congested. It's basically my go-to. I turn around, grab whatever I want off the shelf. But there is so much there that it's getting a little congested. So I think I'm going to have to rethink my shelving situation. Yeah, and even if I go next shelf down, that's all getting a little congested as well. So that's it for Shed Talk 5. Well, I can look forward to making a video on setting up the tool post grinder, which hopefully within the next couple of weeks I'll have that one sorted. I'm going to play with it, experiment with it, get a bit of footage, show you the wrongs and rights and how the story goes. I don't know, I haven't even started yet. A big thank you again to Harry B., all the way from Northern Ireland, he sent me the winding handle for the lathe. Absolutely chuffed to bits with that. I must say thank you so much, guys, for subscribing. We're now on 400 plus subscribers in, you know, three months, three months and a couple of weeks, something like that. So I'm absolutely pleased as punch with that. And it gives me the drive to carry on, knowing that you guys seem to actually want to look at what I'm doing. So that's a great thing. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon. Thanks again, guys.